Dude, what's up? I'm back. Oh man, I'm getting sad. A lovely, lovely trip back home to Baltimore. Went to a lot of different sneaker uh, retailers and checked some things out. Enjoyed the family, had a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to my bro, Fat Cat the Boss, on his birthday celebration. We turned it up, turned it out. That's what we do, Street Kings Entertainment. But we're going to talk about a topic that was presented to me in confidence behind closed doors. They said, the solution, what are your top 10 sneakers of all time, in your opinion? Because you're an older cat, and you tend to have a lot of iconic sneakers in your collection that the younger generation just aren't feeling, they won't touch. Maybe they have a few pair just for, they want them in their collection. So I'm going to do the top five in order, then the bottom five are just going to be me pulling the sneakers out, but they made the top 10, and I'm not going to rank them. Because I want you to discuss that and say why did I leave this particular shoe off and um, why the shoe wasn't in the top five. And I'll let you all debate that because it's just my opinion about how I feel about certain shoes. The, uh, the other issue with it too is that it's not the colorway I'm presenting. It's the actual model, the release model. So I may not have the uh, original colorway of the shoe that was released but i had the actual model that was released so we're going to get into that and shoe number one and this is irrefutable you you can't debate this it is the air force one not the low not the mid just simply put the air force one in its true original release right here shout out to charlie rito rest in peace if you're from Baltimore, you know what I'm talking about right here. The Air Force One is by far the most iconic sneaker ever made. Uh, like I said, made famous by the DMV area along with Baltimore. Really, Baltimore was to push the market for this with Nike. And uh, Charlie Rito convinced Nike to keep releasing the shoe because we loved it. He had uh, several stores in the Baltimore area, and the shoe could not stay on the shelf because it's very clean looking. Um, not too crazy and back in the day it had Nike Air without the swoosh in it that's how you know you got the quote unquote OG model so if you hit um, downtown locker room DTLR the outlet in Pasadena Glen Barney Maryland you will find some of the colorways the uh, the chocolate and whites the red and whites the uh, green and whites forest greens is called and you're going to notice that it's painted on the back tab the heel tab that says uh, Nike Air. That's how you know you got the OG model. But these right here are almost 10 years old. Um, I got these uh, when I was in Africa. And um, I really like how they started putting the uh, 82 tab on there to let you know the iconic value of these sneakers. The only knock I had on them um, when I purchased these you know, about 10 years ago, about 7 or so years ago, um, Nike got really cheap with the leather, so they creased. And I want to say it's pretty much a conspiracy, in my opinion, that they knew that there was a culture of sneaker lovers, Air Force One sneaker lovers, that would simply replace the sneaker when they creased. And then the other issue that came later was the yellowing of the sole. The soles began to yellow real fast. So there's another reason to simply toss the sneaker and get another pair, because the status symbol. Um, the resurgence, if you will, uh, for those who weren't aware of the Air Force One around 02, uh, 03 was Nelly coming out with, um, you know, give me two pair. I need two pair stomping in my Air Force Ones. Wasn't a new sneaker, y'all. We were always wearing this. And my story with the Air Force One, purchasing in another part of the country, was right here in San Antonio in 2000, um, before Nelly song, if, if you heard what I just said. And I went to a park that's now, um, excuse me, a mall that's now rack space on I-35 and Walsham. If you live in San Antonio, you know what I'm talking about. It was a Windsor Park Mall, the Hood Mall, if you will. And they had a Foot Locker there. And I wanted to get another pair of black Air Force Ones. And long story short, they were being sold for $49.99. The uh, CSR was like, why do you want those? And he realized I was not from San Antonio. And there was a few more pair in the back and I bought all of them, all the different colorways they had. And he was blown away by this clunky basic looking sneaker because san antonio was a uh air max town everybody was buying air max so number one 
the Nike Air Force One, high, low, mid, whatever you call it, basically the Air Force One in its original design. Next, the Jordan One. Okay, remember, it's the model, not the colorway release. Okay, I just grabbed these out the closet. I actually love these, by the way. Pretty dope. You know, forest green with the satin nylon deal going on. But the Jordan One, 85. Michael Jordan came with his own sneaker. I actually had the original pair. And it came with a wristband and a poster. Jordan brand, do that. It will fly off the charts. But you cannot go wrong by owning a pair of uh, Jordan 1s in any colorway or update. Uh, the only ones I think they didn't really do too well was the Nouveau um, fabric that they put out there. No one was really feeling those. I always see them in the outlet or on sale somewhere at a very, very affordable price. Um, would I buy those? Probably not. Not feeling the material. Some things need to be left alone like they did with the Air Force One. They tampered with this. But you can't go wrong. Always um, pretty much affordable. If you aren't chasing the um, OG and the ones he wore, Jordans, you always find these um, a little over 100, sometimes under 100. I got several pairs for under 100. But the Jordan 1s in at number 2. Next, we're going to talk about when rappers and famous people started collaborating with sneakers. But it's not new because there's some older sneakers on here that had collaborations. But we're going to get into the first uh, music collaboration with the sneaker, according to my recollection, is the Adidas Superstar, a.k.a. the Shell Toe, made famous by Run DMC. And it's mind-blowing that the youth that... They don't know who Run DMC is, and that, that just hurts my heart. They know who that garbage little Uzi Vert is. Uh, but, yeah, these right here, the Super Sarkade, the Shell Toe, Shell Head, depending on you from, can't go wrong with the sneaker. And, yes, these were basketball sneakers, just like the Air Force One. These were originally basketball sneakers, made famous by his shell-like toe cap and the three stripes. Just It looks great with a lot of stuff, especially with sweatsuits. So Run DMC made this uh, sneaker very, very famous. Had thousands of people holding these shoes up at the Fresh Fest concert in Madison Square Garden um, with no string, shoe strings in them. He did not win them. You know, oh my goodness, just just a dope sneaker. You gotta have these. Gotta have several pair in there. And uh, there's a resurgence of these back. So shout out to Adidas for bringing these back and with some dope colorways. Sometimes you've done too much experimenting with them, but. Make sure you keep these clean looking people. I've seen a lot of young ladies and men with the dirty laces and just looking grimy. I guess that's the thing with the youngsters, but it looks horrible. It looks really bummy. Um, but keep them fresh looking. Number four. Another sneaker that's been spearheaded by the sneaker culture. But let me back up for a second. The resurgence of this sneaker was spearheaded by the hip-hop culture made famous as a basketball shoe in the late 70s early 80s um, and worn by Clyde Drexler so you'll see the ones that say Clyde's on there and those are the three models that these come in so the suede's if it's a leather colorway they're called the classics and um, if it's like the premium line those are the Clyde's right now Puma is experiencing um, a massive massive resurgence in profits and uh, popularity with the Clyde Coogee Collabo, you've seen them going for $200. Uh, they can't keep those on the shelf. It's a crazy, crazy, just fashionable, classic looking sneaker. I'm not a Coogee fan, but those are pretty dope looking, I have to admit. But right here, these are what we call the Baltimore colorway, because Baltimore Orioles, our baseball team back home. And um, these are comfortable. You can't go wrong. MC Shan, LL Cool J spearheaded these. Um, you heard it in their lyrics back in the day. That's why the Puma, which was a basketball shoe, and they, they tampered with these as well. Um, these did not start with Rihanna and um, one of those Kardashian chicks. Clyde Drexler did it first. Respect to Clyde Drexler. Next, and this is probably debatable, and people say, why is this at number five? You know, um, the Chuck Taylor, Converse. Converse was bought out by Nike. That's why you can find uh, Chucks on the Nike site. And the Chuck Taylors was originally um, a basketball shoe, believe it or not. You see how flat these jokers are. 
I'm not a huge, huge fan of the Chucks, but the Chucks are like timeless sneakers. They dabbled and, you know, tried to update them a little bit to keep them relevant. But you could always wear these as is. Or then the white with the red outline on the blue, you know, splashed in there. It's, it's just a clean looking shoe. Um, rockers love these for his throwback look. Um, if it was anything that I always wondered about the Chucks, I always wondered why this ankle patch was on the inside and not outside so it can be seen. And uh, Kid of Cole has a designer sneaker that kind of sort of looks like these and he reversed the patch. And it looks cool. But the Chuck Taylor will always be around. Always affordable. Um, I've, I've said several times you can get these for like $31, $39 at any military exchange tax free. They're there in abundance. Now for the other five. I'm not going to say the bottom five of the lot. But the other five. And you can rate them as such. Next is the Nike Air Max. These are the uh, 90s. Yeah. So... 326, they had Air Max Day, and people were running out and buying these. These are very, very comfortable sneakers. I always wondered if Nike intended these to be running shoes because they're kind of clunky, and they were more fashionable than anything. But these have basically become casual shoes. And I'm not talking about this uh, material update colorway that's right here. I'm talking about the model people. These look really good, and these sneakers were just killing the mid-90s, early 2000s. Um, they've done updates to this, the Air Max, and I've always gone with this version right here, along with the 98s. But these are just dope, dope sneakers. They're great. They look good with jeans and on foot. Um, cut a little small. Um, I have a, I have a, um, a very rare pair, the Mari, with the infrared in there. And I, I've done a video on those as well. But the Air Max. Got those in there. Uh, next, another shoe you're probably going, oh, excuse me. Um, hey, the solution, come on, man. Why? Why are these sneakers on here? Well, your dad probably met your mom wearing these. That's why. These are the back-to-school specials, and we call them 5411s back home in Baltimore because they were $49.99 with tax that came out to 54 dollars and 11 cents boom me famous up and down the east coast very very comfortable shoe looks fresh in the summer just is easy to clean the gum sole make sure you get the gum sole version because it just makes the shoe pop you can't go wrong with gum sole on any shoe pretty much i love it um i actually have three pairs of these uh some canvas and some black versions of these leather they, they're just a dope clean looking sneaker um, a lot of us, this was probably the first sneaker we bought our girlfriends <laughs> because they were, they didn't hurt your pockets. And these are unisex sneakers, by the way. And they look great. Kendrick Lamar has led the resurgence with these. So the Reebok Classic 5411s coming in in the top 10. Next, the uh, Air Griffey Max. I, I just can't say enough about this sneaker. Um... A part of me wants to put these in the top five because they were just so cool looking when they came out. And I'm glad they re-released these in several models. And I think I have six pairs of these. These sneakers are comfortable. Um, originally, Ken Griffey Jr., the Hall of Fame player who played with uh, the Seattle Mariners. And this is the original colorway right here. He had these sneakers released for him. And they they just crazy. And my only knock on them is... um. The, the midsole material, this white right here, turns yellow pretty fast. So you got to really, really keep up on these and protect them. Um, but if you find these, these are kind of hard to find now, this particular colorway. You just don't see these lying around. You see the updated versions, but you got to get the originals in there. So the King Griffey, uh, Air Griffey Max, and this colorway. Dope sneaker. Next, also a highly debatable sneaker. And you're going, those? Come on, a solution. Those are like my dad's joints. But I'm an East Coast guy, and you have to have some 990s. You heard Raekwon say, for the people that are really into rap music, on the purple tape, you know, make sure you're wearing the right Reeboks. And, well, excuse me, the right New Bounce, pardon me. He was, because he's a sneakerhead. That's why I said Reeboks popped in my head, because there's a song called Sneakers. Um, 
he was talking about the 990s and the 574s because these are the more casual ones and these really aren't casual my first foray into what the heck were these sneakers everyone was wearing was my track coach he wore these and swore by them this is all he ever wore i never saw him in any other things with these 990s and these are very expensive sneakers i've seen these at 165 easy normally and these are the v3s they don't even make the v3s anymore i don't think i think they're up to, to the v4s and i got these for the low because somebody wanted the 574s and they took them back to the store and um they ripped the box off and put them on clearance and i got them for basically half off so i got these like for 71 dollars and these are very very comfortable sneakers and um they look great with jeans if you go on the east coast you're, you're going to see different colorways released the salmon the navy blue the uh the pure whites the uh the blacks and i have not seen those colorways anywhere else around the country in my travels and they just released the salmons and those things are flying off the chart at 165 dollars and trust me your feet will love you for these only thing knock on them is that they're cut small i wear nine nine and a half i got to get these in a ten and these are um nine and a half so i i had to have these so i took the insole out and replaced them but the 990s you got to have those in your collections or the 574s next the f13s this is a sneaker near and dear to my heart not once again this colorway but this model when uh, i first started getting my own money i was selling music i talked about that a while ago and um the first pair of sneakers i bought myself were some uh fila f13 black suede's and some all black nike cortex and i love them the these are a clean looking dope looking sneaker you gotta have them in there they look great Oh my goodness, it's, it's just a dope looking shoe. Um, the leather's always been, see the tumblage on there? See that? They've always had the tumble leather on here so they don't crease really. And Fila has a, a a more economical version of these. These only going for like 59, but you can get these for 39, but it's not this model from um, the shoe department. It's not the same shoe. They're actually really, really uncomfortable. They feel like brand economic sneakers. But if you want those, they look just like them. Um, dope sneaker. So that closes out my top 10 sneakers of all time, in my opinion. Uh, straight from the solution. The bottom five, you can rank them however you want. Uh, we can debate this. It is great. Um, hopefully you're a little older so you understand some of the, uh, the reasons why those sneakers are in there. If you're younger, some of these sneakers were released before you were born. So you may not understand that. There are sneakers that I wanted to put in there. The Ride Livers, the uh, Yvonne Lindels. Um, goodness, it, it, there's quite a few I wanted to put in there. But they didn't quite make the popularity and the buzz that I wanted to say it belongs in there. So that's why I didn't put them in there. The uh, Stan Smiths is another iconic sneaker that didn't quite make the cut. But they're right there. They're in the top 20 hands down. Um, so, remember, comment, like, subscribe, you know, just hit me up on the low like a lot of people do. It, it's crazy how I see these comments on the back end and <laughs> no one says anything. Man, we really like your videos. But, I'm out of here. Remember, it's not why, it's not how much you pay for the sneaker. It's why did you pay that much. Alright, I know I look tired. I'm still kind of jet lagged. My sleep is messed up. And um, I'm going to get it right. But I'm out here until next time. Boom.